Hey, welcome back. Role based access control is the way that you manage access to resources in Azure and Microsoft 365. My name is Sushant Satish, and I am your trainer for this Microsoft 365 certified security administrator associate course. After this lesson, you should be able to plan for role based access control, configure RBAC, and distinguish between Azure RBAC and Azure AD administrative roles, and you will be able to monitor and audit RBAC usage as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So first of all, what can you do with RBAC? RBAC allows one user to manage virtual machine in a subscription and another user to manage virtual network. That's the main differentiation. Using RBAC, you can segregate duties within your team and grant only the amount of access to the user that they need to perform their jobs. Instead of giving everybody unrestricted permission to your Azure subscription or resources, you can allow only certain action at a particular scope. When planning your access control strategy, it is a best practice to grant users the least privilege to get their work done. This is an example diagram which shows a suggested pattern for using RBAC. So let's understand how RBAC works. The way you control access to resources using RBAC is to create a role assignments. This is a key concept to understand. It is how permissions are enforced. The role assignment consists of three elements, security principle, role definition, and scope. Let's talk about security principle now. A security principle is an object that represents a user, group, or service principle that is requesting access to Azure resources. First is user. A user is an individual who has a profile in Azure Active Directory. Group means a set of users created in Azure AD. And service principle is a security identity used by application or services to access specific Azure resources. Now let's understand what is role definition. A role definition is a collection of permissions. It's sometimes just called as a role. A role definition lists the operations that can be performed such as read, write, and delete. And roles can be high level like owner or specific like virtual machine reader. Owner has full access to all resources including the right to delegate access to others. Contributor can create and manage all type of Azure resources, but can't grant access to others. Reader can view existing Azure resources. And user access administrator let you manage user access to Azure resources. Now that we have understood about security principle and role definition, let's understand what is scope. Scope is the boundary that the access applies to. When you assign a role, you can further limit the actions allowed by defining a scope. This is helpful if you want to make someone a website contributor, but only for one resource group. In Azure, you can specify a scope at multiple levels, management group, subscription, resource group, or resource as well. And scopes are structured in a parent-child relationship. When you grant access at a parent scope, those permissions are inherited to the child scope as well. So how are these roles related? When Azure was initially released, access to resources was managed with just three admin access, account administrator, service administrator, and co-administrator. Later, role-based access control or RBAC for Azure resources was added. Azure RBAC is a newer authorization system that provides a fine-grained access management to Azure resources. RBAC includes many built-in roles and can be assigned to different scopes and allows you to create your own custom roles as well. To manage resources in Azure AD, such as users, groups, and domains, and there are several Azure AD administrative roles as well. So let me show you in the Azure portal, what are the different types of RBAC roles available. I'm on my Azure portal. I go to subscriptions, click on subscription, and I can click on Access control I am. So within role assignment, you can see there are different types of roles. So I'm going to click on add, click on role assignment, and let's check the role assignment. 
Azure RBAC is an authorization system built on Azure Resource Manager that provides fine-grained access management to Azure resources such as compute and storage. RBAC includes over 70 built-in roles, but there are only four fundamental RBAC roles, owner, contributor, reader, and user access administrator. So who are owners? Owner has full access to all resources and delegate access to others. Contributor can create and manage all types of Azure resources but cannot grant access to others. And then there is Reader. Reader can view Azure resources. Another type is User Access Administrator. User Access Administrator can manage user access to Azure resources. The rest of the built-in roles allows management of specific Azure resources. So let's understand when you configure. So when you configure RBAC, there are some of the things you need to understand. The first one is listing roles. A role definition is a collection of permission that you can use for role assignments. So I just showed you an example on how you can list all these roles. The second is list access. When managing access, you want to know who has access to what and what are their permissions and at what level. So how can you list access? So I'm going to go back to my Azure portal. So within the Azure Active Directory, I click on users and all users. I'm going to choose one specific user. And on the left hand side, under manage, you can see Azure role assignments. This is one way you can list the access for that user. The next is granting access. In RBAC, to grant access, you assign a role. So how do you assign a role? I'm going to go back to my Azure portal now. So within Azure portal, I'm going to go back to resource groups. I'm going to pick a random resource group. And within resource group, you can click on access control IM. This is how you can grant an access. So you can come to this particular resource group and you can add a role assignment to this particular group. And the next way to configure is to remove access. Just like how you add an access, to remove access work just like that. So you can go under a resource group and you can go to the role assignments and you can select a user and you can remove the access for that user as well from there. Let's talk about how to monitor and audit RBAC usage. Sometimes you need information about role-based access control changes, such as for auditing or troubleshooting purposes. Anytime someone makes change to the role assignment or role definitions within your subscription, the changes get logged in Azure Activity Log. You can view the activity logs to see all the RBAC changes for the past 90 days. So let me show you where you can find that. So I'm going to go back to the Azure portal. I'm going to pick a resource group. I'm going to go under a resource group. And within a resource group, you can click on activity log. This is an easier way to get started to view the activity logs. And this includes a link to download the logs as a CSV as well. An activity log in the portal has several filters. The RBAC related filter include event category and operation as well. That concludes a lesson on role-based access control. In the next video, we're going to learn about solutions for external access. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.